Chinese diplomats have repeatedly claimed that China is the safest country in the world. Maybe that's why Chinese police are unimaginably relaxed at work. In the wealthy province of Jiangsu, a police chief visited a county police station under his jurisdiction in plain clothes in the summer and saw for himself how his subordinates enjoyed a relaxed and pleasurable time at work.这个我走了一圈这个大门口你看到吗一个值班室一个值班名你都没有看到吗来这进来这是前台值班的啊估计是你看两个辅警两个辅警没一个值班名哎呀这怎么得了安全啊不好分钟啊所长在哪儿他们好像今天怎么村里没有什么事情还不出去哦人呢这怎么得了一个民警都没有好哦这吃饭了多少人吃饭十几个吧十几个哦这个说的蛮好的每个人安排保安都可以的你枪在哪儿你枪在哪个在哪个在哪个枪在哪里你大门口一个人都没有安全怎么安全呢你所长啊我负
Auxiliary police in China refers to those who are funded by the government to perform supporting police work. China claims that the total number of regular police officers or people's police is 2.2 million. However, this number has been called into question. For example, the public figure for the police in the U.S. is 920,000, which means that China's police force is about 2.4 times larger. In 2017, Chinese officials announced that five times as many police officers died in the line of duty in China as in the United States, with an average of about one police officer killed every day. It's difficult to explain why police officers suffer such a high fatality rate in a rather safe country. One possibility is that the size of the Chinese police population is large. A more direct way of estimating the size of the police force is to look at the number of civil servants. In China, the People's Police are part of the civil service. The public data available is that in 2016, the Chinese government released a document titled "The 2015 Statistical Bulletin on Human Resources and Social Security Development," stating that China had a total of about 7 million civil servants by the end of 2015. That is to say, China's total population is four times that of the U.S., while the number of civil servants is only one quarter of the U.S. However, as early as 2005, a CCP official revealed that the actual number of civil servants and quasi-civil servants in China, supported by the state treasury, exceeded 70 million, with a ratio of 1 to 18 between the government and the people. In March 2021, another CCP official described in a proposal at the CCP's two sessions that a certain county with a population. Of 30,200 in 2019 had more than 6,000 people supported by the state treasury. Its ratio of government staff to people was one to five, and now devices available to this type of civil servants are becoming more and more sophisticated. With such a large group of police officers, one of their primary jobs is to issue fines to the Chinese public. In China, traffic police are the most dreaded officials for drivers. One can never guess on what grounds the police will issue a fine. What? I thought it was nothing. You just called me. I stopped. What? This is just a police officer taking money. This is for money. Who is the driver? Who is the driver? 这是货吗？嗯，我也不拿这挣钱，这是货吗？咋着不？跟那个没有关系，只看你拉的多少。你现在在哪呢？多少怎么个标准？嗯，多少怎么个标准？背心怎么个标准？就像正常的话，你这种只能做人的话，你放个衣服，放点家家具用品，就少点的东西，那都没无所谓。哥们，我开了这么老多年车了。卸座吧，他能扣我钱，这也扣钱。哎呦我天，就这，这也得扣钱。什么？干活人啊，不容易呀、啊。对呀、啊。Ticketing means that these civil servants are working hard while generating income for the state and themselves. So no matter what type of vehicle and on what occasion, a ticket may be given for almost any reason. For traffic police, automobiles are the top item for fines, followed by electric scooters and motorcycles. These two types of vehicles are illegal to manufacture and sell. Many people who can't afford automobiles use them to commute or take their children to and from school. For the huge takeout industry that has emerged in China, electric scooters and motorcycles are the chosen tools for the job. According to eBikeTimes.com, there were 200 million e-bike users in China in 2016. That means almost one in seven Chinese people use e-bikes. But since 2016, China has been on a massive campaign to ban these two types of vehicles, with 190 cities now regulating electric scooters and motorcycles. 
Overall, the goal of these bans is to encourage people to continue buying them and stimulate the growth of the industry, while also allowing the government to profit from ticketing the seizures and even the secondary sale of seized vehicles. As a result, China's central government and local governments have worked together to introduce many unscrupulous regulations. For example, some cities require electric vehicles to be licensed and drivers to have driver's licenses. Although the vast majority of e-bikes and motorcycles sold are legal, only a small percentage of them are road legal. According to a survey conducted by the Chinese media, 95% of the electric bikes on the market that are legal do not meet the regulations given by traffic police. This means that almost 100 million e-bikes have been disqualified from the road. People who desperately need a scooter have to buy one again, but even then, it's hard to be sure that a newly purchased e-bike or motorcycle won't be confiscated when the regulations change. Oh my gosh, look at the motorcycles. Then again, in 2019, China introduced regulations that motorcycles mustn't carry minors under the age of 12 in the back seat, and mopeds mustn't carry people. This means that even though businesses only sell multi-seater vehicles, they can only be used by one person when on the road. So a family that only needs one motorcycle will likely have to buy two. But this isn't the most disturbing part. For many cities, it's up to the traffic police to determine what vehicles are allowed on the road. And even if they meet the so-called national standards, they may still be confiscated by the local police with or without reason. What do the Chinese police do when they see motorcycles with canopies that may be illegal? First, they tow it away, then notify the owner, dismantle the illegal canopy, then inspect it before returning it to the owner. Well, that would be a reasonable procedure according to a normal human being, but the Chinese police find it too much trouble. Shifu 有骂说骂同志们Traffic police officers are sometimes embarrassed to be on the job when they meet their colleagues from the same system, the bylaw officers. They don't even have a driver's license and have been driving around. What should they do, ticketing or not? <laughs> Tigong 
，让看不到驾照的人来开车，开车出来执法。Now let's go back to the beginning. Why was the police chief so worried about his subordinates working in such a casual manner? Because the Chinese government is indeed very worried about the instability of the society, who is considered most worrisome according to the CCP. This is a banner in Shantou City, Guangdong Province. It reads, Lawful crackdown on black and evil forces that incite the masses to riots and organize mass petitions. It's true that in the Chinese society where there are five people to one government staff, protests by the common Chinese give the government officials a headache. Maybe the Chinese police feel that they don't have enough manpower and they are still training more officers to help them maintain social stability. Take this shield. Step back. Step back. Step back. Aim at the neck. Aim at the head. And then step back. Step back. And then go at the feet again. Got it? I aim at the foot and cut the toes off. Because when we face criminals, we need to be able to control them and then quickly call 110. Got it? Just这样都违规。对。我之前问过，问过你们那个领导的，他们说只要没有，只要没有超过这个玻璃窗，刑警把他找不出来，能够开，能能够看到玻璃窗，看到前后前后那个就不算违规。我穿在了没有？我穿